testing, one, two, testing. This is what they say. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Monday morning. I know I said 9 a.m., but this is Simoson. Anything can happen here, okay? So let's not get hung up on uh, semantics. Let me just check my uh, deal here just to make sure we're on the right page. Okay. All righty. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys had a great weekend and you're ready for a brand new week and a brand new day. Bo Allen. I was expecting you, Bo. <laughs> it's always good to see you, Bo. Thank you so much. Guys, uh, for those of you that are watching and tuning in, please do me a favor. If you could... Um, Share this live, share it with the council, your counselor, your area counselor, share it with the Minister of Local Government and Housing, Honorable Gary Combo. share it with the Mayor, Mayor Chitangala, uh, Chilando Chitangala, share it with the Minister of Transportation, share it with, um, tag somebody on there that, that you think would be would benefit from this conversation and I think that we all can this is a conversation that truly really and truly speaking must be in front of us at all times especially when it comes to the to the affairs of the city and when I say the city I'm talking about Lusaka City Council uh, I'm biased because I live here and this is my hometown. I'm sure the people in Kabwe will fight for Kabwe. The people of Livingston will fight for Livingston. The people of uh, Choma will fight for Choma. But we, the people of this great city of Lusaka, uh, must speak up for the city, must speak up for the city and speak out for the city. And I often say to you that in order to understand or at least in part, in order to understand where we are, you must first of all appreciate where we have come from in terms of the functionality of the city. Now remember, it's, it's, it's important for you to realize one immutable fact. The job of Lusaka City Council is revenue collection and service delivery. You, you, you must never lose sight of that. Let me say that again because I think that is abundantly important. The role, the function, the modus operandi of Lusaka City Council is revenue collection and service delivery. So therefore, it is safe to assume that if there is no money, there could be no service delivery. If Lusaka City Council is not making money, then it cannot deliver services. Services that the people, you and I, the city needs. Services like garbage collection, fixing of roads, uh, maintenance of, of, of traffic lights, and uh, 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 procurement of garbage collection vehicles, and and it, uh, it's a myriad, it's, it's, it's a plethora of things that fall under the category of services. So we've established that without money, you can't provide service. Now, the question is, does Lusaka City Council make enough money to deliver the services that the people of Lusaka needs? <laughs> the answer is a resounding yes. Lusaka City Council makes millions of of Kwacha, but the problem is in the past and part of it today still we had a situation where in one of the most profitable money-making machines that any city could ever have are the markets 
Because the markets generate millions of kwacha. The markets and places like uh, the bus stations, the terminals, uh, Kulima Tower, uh, uh, Intercity bus station, City Market, BH, all of these edifices, all of these huge markets, huge bus terminals, bus terminals are money-making machines. But in the past, and this is something that we are still grappling with today, but things have changed a little bit. But let me, let me give you context. In the past, these entities were under the, uh, were under the control of just mere patikadas. This young man that has recently been sent to prison, Francis, uh, what's his name? Uh, tell me in the comments. The, 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 this is a PF Kada from uh, uh, Intercity, who has recently been sent, been sent to prison. Tell me the name. Tell me the name. Is Francis something? Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. You, you'll tell me the name. And, and I know you, know you know who I'm talking about. This young man, and with many people like him, were making millions of kwacha at the expense of the city. Francis Kalimanshi, when Kalimanshi would go through intercity, do you know how much money that Kalimanshi, under the guise of the SG of PF, they were, they were collecting in cash, daily, not monthly, every single day. And when I tell you the figure, you will now understand, you will begin to understand and appreciate the scope of this problem and why this Francis was able to build the type of homes that he was building just from being in charge of intercity. Kalimanshi and Francis on their own, were collecting a more than a hundred thousand kwacha per day. Per day! Collect that money, go straight to the secretariat, the PF secretariat. Abena Davis Mwila would determine how much money the secretary general would keep, how much money the boys, Abena Kalimanshi, Abena Francis, how much money they would keep. And then ultimately, eventually, how much money would be remitted to council. So the issue was, the money was collected. The big wigs in the SG's office, they collected their cut. The guys down here, Avena Francis, collected their cut. Avena Kalimanshi, their cut. And then finally, they would turn around, turn around and say, okay, Mpieshi, Isha Sharako, now, let me tell you what that used to do to Lusaka City Council. Lusaka City Council, because they depend on this revenue, in the past, anyone who works for council will verify this. Anybody you speak to that works at Lusaka City Council will independently uh, verify this. During that time, council workers sometimes used to go two years tabafola two years tabafola uomba ku council but taufola for two years why because all the money most of the money the bulk of the revenue was being squandered was being looted was being stolen by these people that call themselves party loyalists and decadas, Francis, Kalimanshi, Davis Wheeler, and his group and his band of criminals and his band of brothers. All under the guise and the and and and, and the camouflage of no Ichipani. At the expense of council employees who were not receiving a salary. They were not. Now, fast forward to today. You go to Lusaka City Council today. Council workers of Balafola. Council workers of Balafola, Kuria. 
They even now they even get advances. In the past, ukupoga ukupoga advance. Now alembesha advance munzabe tutila advance. Now alembesha advance akale. Walembesha advance as a council worker. Now alashimana. Walalo lena two years ta upoka advance there. Why? There was no money. There was no money. Where was the money? It was being stolen. It was being looted by these people that call themselves party loyalists. Namely, Abena Francis, Abena Kalimanshi. And it's a shock to me that Kalimanshi is still walking around here free. Huh? Abena Davis Mwila. All these guys that had access to huge amounts of money. Davis Mwila is on record as saying, these markets are yours, telling PF Kadas. These are your markets. Take control of them. The markets don't belong to Kadas, whether it's PF, UPND, MMD, whoever. The markets belong to the people of Zambia. The markets belong to Lusaka City Council. Lusaka City Council is the owner of these markets. The revenue from these markets is supposed to go into the coffers of Lusaka City Council. This is the reason. Uh, you see, this uh, position of town clerk, hmm. uh, you know, I tell you, we, we really fool around in this country. He position Yabu town clerk. You have no idea how vital, how, how critical that office is in terms of charting the way, mapping a, a, a usable pathway for functionality in this city. But when you place people in that position, the former TC, uh, the reason he was uh, re removed from that office was because there were issues in terms of accountability. And in this country, unfortunately, it, it doesn't have to be this way, but it is. In this country, those positions, town clerk, are often riddled with scandal because of the nature of that office. You are putting people in such an office who have no vision for the city, who have no love for the city, the only thing they think about is lining their pockets. And this is the reason, my brothers and sisters, we've got a problem with counselors. If you knew the vital role that counselors play, never mind the, the town clerk, the TC, these people we call counselors, when you elect counselors from a pool of uneducated, uncaring, blindly waffling cadres as counselors, you've got a problem. You have got a problem. Because if you are electing people from that pool, from that type of background, and you give them a position of authority in terms of charting the way forward for the functionality of a city. But you are electing councillors who have no desire to have a functional city. All they are concerned about is making money for themselves. Then the city will suffer. The city will suffer. You've got councillors who go in there with the sole purpose of making money. That's all. They never wake up and say, how can we make Lusaka City better? How can we make traffic flow better? How can we make that the city is consistently clean? How can we make sure that people are aware of, of taking responsibility of their surroundings? How can we do that? Those are conversations that councillors do not have. The only conversation councillors have, whether it's in PF, whether it's in UP, whoever they are, whether it's in UPND, whoever, whether it's MMD, the only conversation councillors have, how can I make money off of this? What's my cut? How am I going to benefit from this? My brothers and sisters, boys and girls, I want you to hear me. 
God give us leaders. God give us counselors that will wake up and say, the city comes first. God give us leaders. God give us counselors. Oh, I, 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 Kabila, I desire the day a counselor, regardless of what political party they're from, a counselor that utters those words, the city comes first. Not with these jokers. Not with the jokers before. These counselors. None of them, none of them have that desire for the city to function. None of them. It's all about themselves and the money they, that they can make. But here it is. And this is the truth. As bad as things are, they're better than what they used to be. Because today, at least, council workers, walafola. Today, at least, council workers, walapokama advance. In the past, there was nothing like that. There was nothing like that. It was not there. So, I want to talk to you about some of the underhanded tactics that Lusaka City Council uses in order to raise revenue. And it's, it's wrong. It, it, they should not be doing that. For example, you remember when um, this is Simon Mwerlein Market. Council had advertised that space in the market is available and council is receiving applications from members of the public to apply for shops and space within the market. Each application form costs 250 kwacha. Simon Mwera Market can only maximum capacity is about 3,500. Bottom and the top. 3,500 spaces, thereabouts. Do you know how many people applied? Paying 250 kwacha each? Do you know? Tell me in the comments. Tell me in the comments if you know. How many people applied and each person paid 250 kwacha for an application to apply for a shop in Simon Moy Lane? Now keep in mind, there are only 3,000, about 3,500 spaces available in that market. But do you know how many people actually applied and paid for the application fee? Tell me in the comments if you know. Tell me. Tell me, tell me if you know how many people applied. I will tell you how many people applied, but tell, I want to know if you know. More than 10,000 people. More. More than 10,000 people. Bo Allen's got it right. More. Now, I want you to do the math. Calculate 10,000 by 250 applicants. How much is that? Of course, there were, there were a few lower, lower tiers. I think for the, for the stands, it was 150 kwacha. Okay? But there was a higher tier, which was 250 kwacha per application. Which, that was the majority. The majority of the members of the public applied for the shops, and each application was 250 uh, kwacha. Now, multiply 10,000 applicants by 250 kwacha. How much is that? Tell me. Bo Allen, thank you. You see the figure there? You see the figure? Now, this is where the scandal is. There's nothing wrong with council uh, uh, announcing that we're about to open the market, so uh, we are asking the pub members of the public to apply because very soon we're going to open the market. 
Members of the public quickly, 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 they ran to Lusaka City Council. Housing Department, Babulama forms, I'm application forms, Vadi Pidesho, Shimpia Bo Allen, Abikira Pavashi Pangaba Council. When did they first make that announcement? That was more than two years ago. Two years, more than two years ago. In Piabashipanga, but the market is not open. To add insult to injury, street vendors around Simon Mualain market are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. What does Lusaka City Council say? We are going to give first priority to the vendors because they will enter the market first. So my question is, Ngaba Deba Adi Pidama 250, Ama applications, where are you going to put them? Huh? Where are you going to put the people that applied if you turn around and say, no, we're going to give the street vendors first priority? Do you see how messed up Lusaka City Council is? Do you see that? Do you see how how duplicitous how they create their own problems and then they they expect someone else down the road to fix those problems ah to our papa i tell you chalo chesu this is zambia ne your mentality yo that mentality you ask the public apply We've got space in the market. The market's going to be open very soon. But the application form is 250. The public rush to housing. There were queues there. Abantubadi so diva. Hey, my council now be sula market. They can not just apply. I'm a 250. Vashipanga, vashipanga, vashipanga. Mute. More than two years ago. The market is still there, just there. And then they turn around and say, we're going to give first priority to street vendors. I'm a street, how many street vendors are there? How many? What about the people who legitimately went there with 250 kwacha and their application forms? Where are you going to put them? Lusaka City Council, don't fool around. You're playing with the city. The city's going to hell in a handbasket. You're doing nothing about it. You're twiddling your thumb, singing Kumbaya, and sitting in your beautiful air-conditioned offices. And the whole CBD is going to hell in a handbasket. Wake up. Do the right thing. The city comes first. Open that chi market. Open it. So that we can decongest the streets. And when you open it, don't give it to some kada to manage it. Give it to a professional. A professional who knows what functionality is. Because I can tell you now, uh, our, our, these kadas, Whenever in this is <laughs> this is so sad in, in in Zambia when you build a brand new market, the perimeter area of the market, Kadas want to 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 erect utuma makeshift uh, stands, utuma shacks along the perimeter of a market. Kadas are the ones who benefit from those makeshift. How can you have a beautiful structure, a beautiful market, Mwakula market brand new, new brand Mwakula, Mwakula, and then I'm a cadres by that yo, but drainage system, but that therefore to the kulo to my shacks, shidia mpia shidia, all those shacks around the market, Lusaka City Council doesn't even make one kwacha from there, not even one, shingra from my pocket yama cadres kuapwa. I Munyaole market, Munyaole market was demolished. The, re, the, the occupants of Munyaole market started building, building stores on top of the drainage system on the outskirts of the fencing of Munyaole market. Lusaga City Council does not make any money from those stands. 
It's only cadres who collect that money. No mamunji pushe. How much money is there? Mbwana. Mwe angala. Nempia shifuma kuria. City market. Iine city market here. All the stands around city market that they build on top of the drainage system. Tuotuma shark studia. Tudia. Tudia babika mumbali tudia. All that money goes only to cadres. Lusaka City Council doesn't even make one kwacha from that nonsense. Do you know why that happens? It's because of councillors who are cadres or cadres who are councillors. What you need is professionals. Professionals. People who are educated, who desire to serve this city. And who wake up in the morning and say, how can I make this city better? How can I make the roads uh, better? How can I make traffic flow better? How can I have a cleaner city? How can I sensitize our people uh, uh, not to, to litter? All of these things that the councillors are supposed to be doing. Do councillors in Zambia do that? They don't. Every one of them is useless. You know why? Because they come from a cadre background. A cut a background that does not take into account or adopt the mantra, the city comes first. Ah, to a pena. Masanga fena, usemuka tingere kuya tiyo na pena. You drive me to it. 